This is Hoosier Ag Today. It's the morning edition on the 14th of October 2015. Good morning. I'm Andy Eubank with the latest Indiana Farm News on our morning edition, including Indiana farmers who are plowing less but yielding more. And one of our regular contributors here at Hoosier Ag Today, Arlen Suderman, is heading to FC Stone. We'll hear from Arlen and find out what his new assignment will include. Also a look back at higher markets and very strong soybeans especially, and Arlen's insights into what happened with the markets on Tuesday. And Ryan Martin is here with the Indiana Farm Forecast. It's the morning edition of Who's Your Ag Today. Indiana Farm Bureau needs you. It's critical for your farm and family that your voice be heard daily. Farm Bureau membership tells legislators that Indiana agriculture stands together on property tax issues, farmland annexation, and water rules. Protect your livelihood and children's future by going online to infb.org slash join or call 1-800-FARM-BUREAU. infb.org slash join or call 1-800-FARM-BUREAU. Your membership brings value and benefits, but more importantly, it adds your voice to that of your neighbors and friends. Don't stand on the sidelines. Be heard on local, state, and national issues. We'll show you how. Indiana Farm Bureau needs you. Go to infb.org slash join or call 1-800-FARM-BUREAU. This is Who's Your Ag Today and the latest news in Indiana agriculture. Brought to you by the DuPont Pioneer Agronomy Report with timely reports from across the state during harvest each week on this station and at the agronomy page at HoosierAgToday.com. New figures from the Indiana Conservation Partnership show that conservation tillage and cover crops are being used by more and more Indiana farmers with some impressive results. Gary Truitt has details. According to the annual spring tillage survey, in 2015, Indiana farmers saved 32 million tons of topsoil by using a variety of reduced tillage methods. In addition, the survey showed that cover crop adoption in Indiana continues to increase. State conservationist Jane Hardesty said over 933,000 acres of Indiana farmland was planted to cover crops this year, due in part to Indiana's flooding this summer. We've had farmers come in our door that we haven't seen before. And just to say, you know, about the only thing I can do is it's a drowned out area. I really can't put anything in there. It's just going to sit there now until next spring. I think I do want to try some cover crop just to get something growing out there to kind of help the health of that soil. She told Hoosier Ag today, while the crop loss from the spring rains was unfortunate, it did provide an excellent example of the benefits of cover crops and a conservation cropping system. We did see uh, actual fields out there where we've had no-till and cover crops right across the road where they got like 18, 20 inches of rain. Uh, The crops were in better shape where we had cover crop and no-till versus conventional farming. And that has been a testimony in itself. Hardesty said it's not just tillage methods and it's not just cover crops. It's finding a system that works on individual farms to improve soil health, reduce inputs, and increase yields. Another survey will be taken this fall to monitor the level of fall tillage versus planting cover crops. Those results will be available early next year. I'm Gary Truitt. A popular and well-respected agriculture market analyst will soon begin a new chapter in his career as he moves to F.C. Stone. Arlen Suderman is senior market analyst at Water Street Solutions, but only through this Friday. Certainly have appreciated my time that uh, Water Street Solutions have been a great opportunity. It's a great organization, serves the farmers well, uh, but simply provided an opportunity at INTL FC Stone to be chief economist of commodities for their operations and some opportunities that uh, were just too good to pass up. And uh, moving forward with the blessings of those involved at Water Street and looking forward to the opportunities. Suderman has been a regular contributor at Hoosier Ag Today and it's It's not unusual to see his analysis in the Wall Street Journal and other national media outlets. But he heads to Kansas City after this week to join F.C. Stone, a Fortune 500 financial services firm specializing in commodity trading. Well, I'll be heading up a research team focusing on uh, analysis of the commodities, uh, corn, soybeans, wheat, uh, cattle, and hogs, and providing that information to the staff. 
uh, as they work with clients, being able to tie that together. Uh, many people within the organization already have some solid research uh, groundings, but being able to tie that together with what's happening in the global markets, the money flow, the funds, and the flow of the funds, the currency exchange rates, some of these outside market forces that you and I talk about on a weekly basis, helping pull the picture together for them. Suderman shares daily market commentary with his 14,000 Twitter followers and Who's Your Ag Today online and newsletter readers, and he hopes to continue reports for HAP in the near future. I'm Andy Eubank. This is Who's Your Ag Today, Indiana's Farm Network. I'm Chief Meteorologist Ryan Martin with a look at Who's Your Ag Today's Indiana Farm Forecast from the Wells Fargo Forecast Center. You know what? It's finally starting to feel like autumn across the Hoosier State. We definitely saw the cooler air holding yesterday. Today, sunshine should help. It will be a nice fall day. Sunshine should help boost temperatures a little bit more, and we'll see that as we go through tomorrow. But keep an eye out. Clouds are going to be thickening up tomorrow afternoon, and we're setting up to see a weak front come through tomorrow night into Friday. That's right. Models finally in agreement. We're speeding this thing up a little bit. Probably by Friday midday, the front is through. This front is not a big precipitation maker. As a matter of fact, the latest look that I have at it, a few hundredths of an inch to at most a tenth. I actually would like to say spits and sprinkles, and honestly, my gut feeling is we're going to be mostly dry here. I think this front is more about air mass change, more about a big push of cool air to come in for the weekend than it is about precipitation right now. And the reason why I think that is is because of this. Look. Our air is dry right now. We haven't had really good solid rains over a large part of the state in a while. We've had little hit and miss stuff, but nothing solid. So our atmospheric profile is very dry. If all we've got is a change in air mass from cool to downright cold, you're not going to wring much moisture out of an already cold air mass, okay? So I just think that precipitation is not going to be easy to come by. What I will say, though, is temperatures are going to be much cooler this weekend. In fact, we have to reevaluate. I, th- I think we've got a good chance at patchy frost over a large part of the state as we go through the Friday night time frame, and we could do it again on Saturday night. Now, I don't think it's going to be a hard freeze. I don't think it's going to be a killing frost by any stretch. But as the saying goes, probably going to be a bit of frost on the pumpkin out there one of those nights. Winds will play a key factor in that as well. If the winds stay up, maybe less of a frost risk. However, is it a story? Here we go. We brought this up before, but you know what? October 17th is the normal first frost date for central Illinois, central Indiana, right through this corridor. So if we get a little bit of patchy frost this weekend, does it matter? Absolutely not. Not an issue at all. But the cool air will take its own sweet time getting out. The high-pressure dome looks strong, and when it does, I think you're going to start to see some pretty good south winds coming up the back side of the high. This will be as we go through early parts of next week. So to me, that says that we could see a nice rise in temperatures again. We get some howling south and southwest winds. That's a recipe for really impressive temperature moves. And then as we go into the second part of the week, so Thursday, Friday, a front comes in, and the stronger the south winds are, The more warm air that we can inject into the area ahead of the front, the stronger this front looks. And the latest European model just kind of went gangbusters with it. I'm not ready to go there yet, but we may be underestimating this front for late Wednesday through Thursday of next week. Right now, I'm seeing quarter to three-quarter inch rainfall totals coverage 60, 70 percent. If the latest round of the European model verifies, or even if it holds, We're going to have to update that forecast because right now we're seeing some potential two to three inch rains in the center of the front. Uh, It's early. We're not going to go there yet, but it is something to watch. Could be some significant rains the latter part of next week. That's the way things are stacking up. Have a great rest of your day. I'm meteorologist Ryan Martin on Hoosier Ag Today, Indiana's Farm Network. This is Who's Your Ag Today and the Tuesday Farm Market Review. And it was a breakout day for the bean market. Corn and wheat followed higher. This update is brought to you by Seed Consultants, simply the best value in the seed industry. 800-708-2676 and seedconsultants.com. 
I'm Andy Eubank. Mid-session on Tuesday, I got market analysis from Arlen Suderman. Beans benefiting on Tuesday from great demand. And historically, when we get past that October crop report, trade the trade tends to focus away from the supply side and more to the demand side. And demand is robust. The trade figures, okay, after the October crop report, the biggest downward adjustment USDA might make, or fr frankly upward, would be a bushel or so. That's the most they would expect. So basically say, okay, we know what the size of the crop is. That's priced in. That's that's why we dropped below nine dollars. Now let's look at the demand side and demand has been robust the last six to eight weeks and continuing to be China buying another 8.8 .8 million bushels overnight. When you look at the export inspection report coming out, we shipped 67.3 million bushels in the week ending last Thursday and of that total 53.9 million went to China. Uh, China is taking soybeans at about twice the normal pace for this time of year. As soon as they hit the port, they're taking them. That demand is aggressive. And it's soy meal had a breakout on the charts this morning. That's a key component that's been lacking from the soybean market. So that's another positive and helping give a boost to the soybean market. Arlen, at what point do we hit a top on November beans now well over $9? Well, I think as you look at the soybean market, I think it's got a little bit of room to run. Not as much as I once thought. But I certainly see some opportunities to trade up into that 950, 970 area, maybe even up in the $10 area. That's going to depend on planting and the crop growing season in South America. Right now, it's very wet, excessively wet in the southern parts of Brazil and excessively dry in the northern areas like Mato Grosso, which is a major production area. That's slowing seeding in that area. This is the typical pattern we see in a strong El Nino type of a year. So that raises some risk concerns for traders. That's a concern going forward. And also as El Nino dies this winter, it's expected to increase the risk of hot, dry growing season U.S. Midwest next year. So the question comes, how does that weather scenario play out over the next four to six months and, and as to regards to how much risk premium the trade wants to put into the price of soybeans? Corn plods along, wheat getting a bump. Corn dipped below key support at 380 for the December contract, but right back above it now based on the strength in soybeans, but also the major commodity indices. They have positive chart signals as well, and that's helping boost corn. Corn gains being limited by that spread activity between soybeans and corn. Soybeans a buy, corn a sell right now after the last crop report and the weak exports for corn. So corn trying to go higher. I think if soybeans keep going higher, it'll eventually drag corn. Arlen Suderman, Senior Market Analyst, Water Street Solutions, 866-249-2528. And here's how we ended the day. Up three and three quarters on both December and March corn. Dece at 384 and a half. March settled at 395 and a half. 26 and a half cents up for November beans, 914. January went to 918 and a quarter, up 25 and three quarters. And Chicago wheat for December, 519, up 12 and a quarter. Those are the Tuesday markets, and that caps off our Wednesday morning, morning edition here on Hoosier Ag Today. We're back for the midday edition later on today after 12 noon Eastern time with a look at the grain markets and analysis. And Tom Fritz with EFG Group is scheduled to join me for that on the midday edition right here on Hoosier Ag Today. I'm Andy Eubank from all of us here at HAT. Have a great Wednesday and a safe harvest as it rolls on. Who's your ag today? Indiana's Farm Network.